In 1680, Paris had 450,000 inhabitants. To the east, the Bastille. The Louvre Palace. And just to the west, the open countryside. The king ruled alone, an absolute monarch. France was spreading her riches throughout the world. Her army was victorious. The Treaty of Nijmegen made Louis XIV Europe's strongest ruler. The Sun King had indeed reached his zenith. Come on, come on, come on! Bravo, bravo! Uh. What will we do? I'd better speed off and find me a doctor, imbecile. Uh, yes, master. Oh. My master is dying of wounds. You must hurry. He suffered grievous wounds during a duel. Oh, yeah? I beg of you, do something to try and save my good master. I'll look into it. <laughs> oh, 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 what? Oh, what's that? Oh, oh, that's you. Uh, oh, dearie, save him. Oh, you mustn't just let him die, my good man. There must surely be something, a cure. Oh, my good master. Oh, I beg of you, do something. Oh, it's not that bad. Oh, if only your words could come true, God bless you. Thanks. Well, now step it up. He may die at any moment. You'd better get dressed and go fetch the boy. Who knows? I may need you both. I'm going. Oh, oh, oh if they don't hurry it up, they're going to let him die. Oh. Next, please. Huh? Uh, get up, right away. What's going on? Uh. I feel much better. Yes. He's all right. No, 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 no. Uh, hold on. Uh, look at the chart. Um, Saturn. Kidneys. That's it. Ah. Huh? <laughs> for you, for services well rendered. Yeah! Sixteen eighty. Renovation work at the Palace of Versailles was nearly completed. The king had never forgotten how inadequate he felt when, 20 years before, he had been received in gaudy splendor by his finance minister, Fouquet. From then on, he had promised himself a more worthy dwelling. A little more to the left. No, a bit more to the right. A little further. Oh, too far. No, to the right. No, there. No, no, there. That's fine. There. In 1661, Versailles had been nothing more than a hunting lodge, a favorite hideaway of Louis XIV. Six years later, much work had already been done. And then Laveau decided to enclose the original building. 
It will be a marvel, Majesty, a true gem. The world will envy you. The painter Lebrun took thorough charge of decoration. Oh, no, that's mousy. It needs more color. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, I prefer blue. A lot of blue. Uh, 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 red. Uh, oh, oh, no. no. The note designed the gardens. And then, Hardouin Mansart was called right, in to replace but... Lebeau. Oh. For the time being, the Sun King was still living in the Louvre, too close to his subjects, whom he didn't trust. Come on, faster, faster. We'll never get there in time to save my poor master. Hurry up a bit! Come on, come on! Stop, we're here, finally. That's how it happened, my dear, so you must admit it's incredible. That way, go on, go on, go on. Stop on it. Hurry, please hurry. Oh, then I said, pardon me, dear Marquise. Oh, watch out, will you? Come on. Come on. I beg of you. There he is. Oh, Master, I just don't know what to do. Nothing has worked. We've tried everything. And what treatments have been administered? He's been bled mostly. Bleeding time. Uh, oh, oh, oh. No, no. Bleeding time. Oh. Don't make me insist. No. Oh. 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 And the patient's He's diet, ma'am? What's this? Oh, it's true. He barely touches, I assure you. He hardly eats. Yes, yes. I see, I see. Fine. Well, since we're all of one accord... We'll have to change all that. And we'll try this. <laughs> and I said bleeding time. Uh, no. Yes. Huh? No. Yes. No. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 enough. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you'll pay for this, you'll see. Couldn't be gone too bad. Well, eh? he's got the best. Hey, friends! Huh? I need your help right away. Uh, uh. <laughs> Arrest that man. <laughs> Naughty boy, to the closet. <laughs> Huh? Oh no, mommy, mommy! And keep still in there. Drink this. Uh, A bit of rest, and you'll be as good as new. Let's go. With all my respect. Ah, oh, oh, hey, ha, ha. Drivers. What's this? Some kind of joke? Really? Now it is a bit much. You realize, of course, you are in the wrong. No! But if I had the right of way, I mean, really, I did have the right of way, and you. Fine, 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 fine. Now we're going to report it. Yeah, we're going to see whether it's false. But you never got out of bounds. Thank you. Whoa. Hey, can't you keep him down on the farm, eh, Bumpkin? Hey! Hey? This place is worse than Grand Central Station. My dear madam, are you... Yes. Oh. 
Absolutely no pain, Captain. <laughs> 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 come on, all. Come see my pain. Yeah, magic potion will bring you back your long lost youth. Give us here. Try it. Never fall. Imposter. Charlatan. Quack. Good for nothing. Take that. Ouch. And that. Ouch. And that. Ouch. And that, 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 Come on, hurry it up, can't you see? We're in a rush. Hey, he's got all the time in the yeah, world. Take your time, yeah, pal. Yeah, we're yeah, working. Yeah. Oh, one moment, one moment, Mr. Officer. I've just parked here for three minutes. Oh, hey, oh, 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 you well, you well, the 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 May 6th, 1682 was moving day from the Louvre to Versailles, just recently finished. The court, the ministers, the thousand clerks and civil servants making up the king's entourage were used to following his majesty from castle to castle across the country, such as from Vincennes to Fontainebleau or from Saint-Germain to Chambord. After all, a move was necessary from time to time, if only to clean up all the mess. Come on, hurry up, let's move, will you? Do I have to write it down for you, huh? Hurry, 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 faster, faster, or he'll write it all down for us. Hey, you down there, get going. Oh, this is wearing my nerves out. All right, you all step it up. Come on, come on, come on. What a mess, it's taking forever. Oh, my nerves, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Blast it! Whoa. Ah. Ah. That was my voice. Whoa. Versailles would be different. Louis remembered the humiliations of the Fronde revolts and their threat to his power. And so it was political necessity that made him require all his courtiers to live at Versailles, and 3,000 did so. Currying favor with his majesty became their full-time occupation. It works! <laughs> yeah, yeah, things will be humming soon. Oh, la la. One of these days, he'll blow up the whole house. Oh, uh, Master, your noble patient summons you to Versailles. No. No, no, I'm going to cry. Uh, uh, that is to say, uh, well, it's true, this money could help my poor clients. Well, all right. Just this once. We'll take a look. No, 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 no. Thanks anyway. But... Like ancient Athens and Rome, France was looked up to for her knowledge of the art of living. Glorification of the king was the foremost concern of every artist at court. But 
French classicism did bring together a number of brilliant minds. Descartes, Pascal, Molière, followed by La Fontaine, Boileau, La Bruyère, Madame de Sévigné, Bossuet, and Racine. Lully was in charge of music. Oh, I don't like that stuff. Achoo! 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 But, sir, yes, you, you should. It's excellent. Uh, leave me alone. Achoo! Scorpions and dried bullfrogs powdered and mashed with leeks. You'll be a well man. Come on. Uh, no, no, no. Achoo! 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 Huh? What? Not you again. Take that off. What for? Leave it to me. This will do you a world of good. There. Uh. Well? Uh. 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 Oh, my back. Oh, your kidneys. Some wood louse powder, dried goat's blood, and oil of scorpion. Ah. For gout, let's see what we've got. We'll be needing woman's milk and some nice tepid cow dung. <laughs> woman's milk and warm cow dung and make it snappy, huh? <laughs> the sun was Louis XIV's symbol. And with it went the myth of the sun god. The Olympic deities became Louis XIV's triumphal theme at Versailles. Yes, Louis the Conqueror. Louis XIV reigning on Mount Olympus. A king who believed he was divine, helped along by his courtiers' ample praise. He lived in complete isolation from the outside world. In 1683, Sobieski, king of Poland, France's ally, defeated the Turks at Vienna. The Turks, also French allies, had helped offset the strength of the Austrian emperor, who now regained his power. In that same year, Queen Marie-Thérèse died, as well as Colbert, only to be replaced by the Marquise de Maintenant and Louvois. The Marquise was not interested in the rollicking life of the court. Her passions were the church and politics. And so to everyone's surprise, Louis became a religious fanatic. He revoked the Edict of Nantes in 1685. Persecuted once again, the Huguenots fled abroad by the thousands. The bravest fled and the prosperous. And a chorus of praise went to the king for this pious act, which robbed France of much dignity and strength and strengthened her enemies. That was the price of intolerance. Louis XIV declared, the tranquility of my subjects lies only in obedience. It's always preferable for the people to be passive than to control even the faulty government of kings who answer only to God. Come now, rise and shine. Am I to understand that you don't want any breakfast? Hmm? Eh? <laughs> A rat? What an odor, my dear. Huh. Yeah, young man. Watch out below. How's he doing? Well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stop by the tavern for a quick drink. Well, you're signing, aren't you? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm. mm, -mm, -mm, -mm. <laughs> well? Well? Eh, eh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, pull up a chair, pal. It's on me this time. <laughs> yeah. uh, come out. You make a great soldier, you know. 
Huh? You gotta sign us your paper. <laughs> Give me a drink. My pleasure. Thanks, pal. And another? I know. Now then, sign. No way, Joe. Oh, coupon. We ought to give him a try, little What is it? I'm the He's got a side. Go ahead, side. That's right. Oh, boy. Bravo! Come on, we're going home. You're stubborn as mules. Right, left, right. No, no, the dummies. Just look at me, now watch. Come on, copy me, deadheads. Ouch! Come on. Oh, copy me, I said. The king's blundering brought William of Orange, his chief rival, to power. In no time, all Europe united against Louis. And then a series of brutal winters. The people were in a wretched state. The king's troops, exhausted, coaxed what little they could out of the barren soil. In a few months, 10% of the population had died. After a brief interlude of peace at the end of the century, the Spanish succession triggered war once again. But the unpopular king, isolated in his palace, pursued his life of splendor. Luckily for him, he would die of natural causes, and not at the people's hand. In 1711, England, who feared the strength of a combined Austria and Spain, left the anti-French coalition. Look at them all. And in 1712, at Denain, Marshal Villard won an unhoped-for victory. Yeah. France saved face, but at dreadful cost. Uh, this should help. Oh, my. September 1st, 1715, after 72 years of rule, 54 of them as absolute monarch, Louis XIV was no more. His countrymen breathed a sigh of relief. A far cry from their former adoration for their king as a youth. Louis had stood firm by France throughout all her difficult times. But his greed and outsized need for glory had made him blind to reality and his people's misery. England, who by artful maneuvering had prevented Spain from joining with either Austria or France, had wangled the right to explore and settle Canada and much of America. But French classicism lingered on. All of Europe began to copy French styles. Austria's Schoenbrunn, Sweden's Drattningholm, Spain's Madrid and La Granja, Russia's Peterhof and Koskovo, Italy's Cassette, England's Hampton Court, Prussia's Potsdam, and in all countries, the nobility spoke and even thought in French. As for absolute power, it would soon be swept aside, and the age of reason would take over. An age foreseen by Racine, Pascal, Descartes, and by other great minds of the time. Spinoza, Leibniz, and Newton. 